Hi everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and today I'll be bringing you my quick and rough review of Parallels 8 for Mac OS X. This virtual machine software retails for $80, but if you are a student, you can get it for half off at $40. Or if you already own Parallels Desktop 6 or 7, you can get an upgrade for $40 as well. So basically what the software allows you to do is run various operating systems from right within Mac OS X itself. So you don't have to reboot your computer just to go into Windows to do a couple of things and things like that. And this doesn't just work with Windows, it works with practically any operating system you can think of. So the various versions of Linux, really old versions of Windows, it just supports practically any operating system as if you were trying to run it on a regular PC. So, of course, this does offer you convenience, so like I said, you don't have to waste time to actually boot into Windows if you just need to go do a couple of things in it. And what's new about Windows, or excuse me, Parallels Desktop 8 is that it has excellent integration with Windows 8, so it supports gestures. So, for example, if you are using a Apple trackpad or a trackpad in your MacBook of some sort, then you could actually swipe from the right side to bring up the charms bar inside of Windows 8. And you could also swipe from the left to switch between your apps, swipe from the top or bottom to do the normal Windows 8 commands there. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a small tour. Now when you first open up Parallels, it'll automatically ask you to create a virtual machine. Now most of the time people use this to use with their bootcamp partition, which is a part it's an area on your hard drive that's dedicated for a certain operating system. So a lot of Mac users use Windows on their Macs occasionally through Boot Camp just to do some things here and there. So what Parallels allows you to do is use that existing partition and runs it inside of the virtual machine. So this is good for, like I said, just doing quick tasks like just going into Windows to open up a couple of files or things like that. And if you actually wanted to play games or more resource heavy things, then you could go boot natively into Windows via Boot Camp to get the ultimate performance. Speaking of performance, Parallels 8 is extremely fast for basic tasks like browsing the web, going through basic applications inside of Windows. The performance of Parallels 8 is excellent. It's almost as if you're not inside of a, inside of a virtual machine at all. The only area where you'll see some performance decreases is if you are running games. So. It is able to run games inside of the virtual machine, but they won't play as good as if you are, play as well as if you are inside of Windows natively. So right now I'm booting up my copy of Windows 8 Professional. So here we are, it's extremely fast if you're on a Mac with an SSD. So here we are inside of Windows 8 running right here within Mac OS X inside of its own little window. Now Parallels 8 has powerful integration with Windows. So for example, if you would like your status bar icons that would usually be in window or excuse me taskbar icons that are usually inside of windows you could actually have those pop up in your menu bar up top and there's also an integration where there will be a start menu button up here so when you click that it'll actually bring up the start menu just like inside of windows also if you have windows integration enabled you could actually have any open applications that are open inside of windows show up with its own icon inside of your mac os 10 dock so there's a lot of different integration options with parallels 8. i don't i'm just not really a fan of those things because when i'm running windows inside of mac os 10 i want it to be separate from everything else i just want it to be isolated all on its own if you'd like to go screen, you could do so. Just click on the full screen button and it goes to native full screen for Mac OS X. So right now it's practically just like we're inside of Windows. So there's not much to really miss here. So everything works really well. In terms of speed and performance, it runs just fine. I don't really have many applications to show you because this is a fairly clean install of Windows. I haven't really gotten around to installing applications, but if you wanted to open something like Handbrake, there it is. If you want to open CCleaner, there it is as well. If you want to go to Internet Explorer, here we are. So for general tasks, virtual machines are fine, and the only instance where I see myself needing to go into it natively is to play games. That's not to say that game performance is bad. I mean, for the most part, older titles inside of Windows in a virtual machine, they work very well. So let me go ahead and shut the virtual machine down so I can show you some of the configuration options that you get with your virtual machine. 
Then I'll go through some of the couple of introductory steps on how to actually create your own. So now that the virtual, mach virtual machine is shut off, if I click on the gear, that'll bring up the settings for the actual virtual machine itself. So under the general tab, you can change the name, you could choose the operating system that you have on it. It'll go all the way down to Windows 3.1 and probably prior to that. You could run various versions of Linux, Android if you'd like, Chrome OS, a bunch of other operating systems. You could also choose how many CPU cores you would like the virtual machine to use, the amount of virtual RAM that you would like to give it, and it will also give you the size of your actual virtual machine. Now, if you aren't using a partition, if you're just using, for example, a virtual hard drive, this is where you will get various information about how much space that it's actually using up. If we go over to options, we get some more integration options, performance optimization options, you get some power options, so you could choose whether or not you want to give your virtual machine better performance or give your laptop better battery life. There are also various security and backing up options. Sharing is where you can sort of integrate your virtual machine with Mac OS X if you'd like to do that. Now under hardware, that's where you can customize sort of the advanced things of your virtual machine. So you could choose if you'd like to use EFI booting, if you do happen to have Windows installed natively through EFI. You could also boot from a network if you have that set up. Here we could choose various graphics and gaming options. So my MacBook Air, it's the base 2012 13-inch MacBook Air, so it has Intel's HD 4000 integrated GPU. I gave it only just 256 megabytes of video memory because my MacBook Air just has four gigabytes of RAM, so I don't want it to use too much. You could choose whether or not you want the Mac's DirectX version to be DirectX 10, DirectX 9, or just turn that off. It's better to leave DirectX 10 on because that will give you better performance and graphics instead of any games that you would like to run. Also, if you'd like to add your printers, you can easily do so. Here we could add multiple hard drives. We could choose the partition that we want to boot from physically. And here we get network information, so depending on how many wireless adapters you have plugged into your Mac or whether or not you want to use a shared network or a bridged network, then you will be able to choose those options here. Basic sound options, input and output. And under USB and Bluetooth, you could choose whether or not you want to use USB 3. I think that is a huge feature for me because I have plenty of USB 3 storage devices, so being able to transfer content to and from it quickly is very good to have. If there's something here that you don't see, you could just click on the plus and add it. For example, you could add a floppy drive if you happen to have any floppy disks. You could also add a CD or DVD, and this will allow you to choose an ISO image file, or you could actually use a physical optical drive that you might have on your Mac, whether it be internal or external. You could add more hard drives, you could add a virtual one if you'd like, and if we go over to the plus again, you could add a serial port, more networking options, and more printing options. So one of the things to talk about is whether or not Parallels 8 is worth the money. Because if you think about it, typically if you are going a legitimate route, you would have to buy Parallels 8 as well as Windows. And that could be a pretty expensive option for something that you might not use very often. Now I think that Parallels 8 is worth it. It's 80 bucks if you're a student or if you have a previous version, it's just $40. And with it, you could do some various experiments. So if you want to mess around with Linux without having to make a partition and get down and dirty with your... MacBook and you don't really want to risk getting anything messed up, then running a virtual machine is the recommended way to go, and Parallels makes it very easy to do that. Also, you could sync up your virtual machine with one of their iPhone apps, and you could actually control your virtual machine from your iDevice, which is kind of neat. And there is also integration with USB devices. So if I go ahead and boot up the virtual machine again, here we could see another performance test because you can see how quickly it will boot up. So here we are at the lock screen already. Let me go ahead and go into Windows. Now when you are inside of your VM, if you go to the Devices tab up top and go to USB, this is where you could actually choose which devices you have physically on your computer will work with your virtual machine. So example, I have a flash drive right here that I'm just now plugging into the USB port on my MacBook Air. Now it will ask you if you want to plug it into your Mac as if you were just using it normally. 
and you could actually see that it shows up right here on my desktop or you could have it plug into your virtual machine and you could use it there so if I do that it will show up inside of Windows as if it was an actual PC and you just plugged in the USB drive into it and when you're done you can just go back to the USB menu click on it and that will put it back over to your Mac you could also do the same thing for any other device you'd like. So if you have an iPhone or a tablet of some sort, you could do the same thing and have it work inside of your virtual machine. Overall, I think that Parallels 8 is a great piece of software. It's very convenient and it's definitely fun to experiment with if you'd like to sort of dive into other operating systems, but you don't want to risk getting your SSD or your hard drive messed up by doing partitioning work and things like that. So overall, I think that like I just said, Parallels 8 is definitely a cool piece of software. It is a bit pricey at 80 bucks, but the more you use it, the better value you will get from it. So depending on who you are and how much you plan on using a virtual machine, this may or may not be worth that full price. If you're a student, I would definitely recommend getting this for $40. I think that's an excellent price. But that's it with this video. If you have anything that you'd like me to sort of cover in a future video perhaps, or if you just have any questions about this one, then go ahead and leave a comment down below in the comments area. But that is it with this video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.